Other than the awesome performance upgrades done in Photoshop CS6, I think my favorite feature has got to be the new crop tool. They've improved it so much. Adobe has improved it so much and made so many awesome changes and useful changes and things that I wanted to see adapted from Lightroom and Camera Raw. They're all moved into Photoshop now and it's just great. I use the crop tool all the time. I use it for screenshots and cropping images for myself, for clients, for all kinds of things. And it's one of the tools that I use most in Photoshop and I'm so excited at all the great changes that Adobe's made to it. So let's take a few minutes and check out the new features and how you can use them and how you can become familiar with them. So go ahead and grab the crop tool located there. Hotkey is just the letter C. And immediately, Photoshop drops an outline around whatever's being cropped. Now, immediately you're gonna notice a difference when you grab any corner and you start to drag your crop. Photoshop is automatically centering the saved portion of your image here within Photoshop for you, which it's a small upgrade, a small little nice thing, if you will. Um, not really something that's a huge change. But what's super cool about it is once you create your crop, the way that Photoshop now works with crops is exactly like Lightroom, where you're grabbing your image and dragging the image underneath the crop, and you're not dragging the crop over the image, which I much prefer because I like working with the image more than I like working with the tools here in Photoshop. So I want to know that I'm pushing and pulling my image around. I don't really care about the crop that much. So we can position the crop however we like, but one of the other things that you can do is we can quickly just flip our crop on its side here by hitting this little arrow, or I believe the X key is the hot key, just like that. We flip our crop and it's gonna constrain here within our document. But you can even drag the image so that you're cropping outside of the document as well. And Photoshop's gonna save that chunk of your document. So let's just right click on this and hit reset crop here. So it's gonna bring us back to what we were doing before. Now, one of the tools that's awesome, which is wrapped right in with the crop tool now, is the straighten tool. This is essentially the same as the ruler tool. You, what you do with the ruler tools, you would grab it and you draw a line, let's say across your horizon, and then up here in the tool options bar, there'll be a button that just said, hey, straighten. And Photoshop would say, all right, you're gonna take that line, I'm gonna straighten and crop your image to that line you just created. It was awesome. But now it's right here wrapped within the crop tool so you can see a live preview of it. You can go ahead and adjust the crop beyond the straighten. So you can use the straightening ruler here on vertical or horizontal lines. I'm actually going to use it on a vertical line here because I want to straighten up the Empire State Building here. So I'm just going to grab one of these vertical lines here and you know, clicking and dragging. And there we go. Something like that looks good. Photoshop will adjust it and it's going to say, all right, here's your crop. I like it. I could at this point grab one of these handles and just further adjust it if I want. And before I let this go, one of the other cool things that's kind of migrated over from Lightroom are these grids. And you have these grids here under the View drop-down menu. All of these different grids, but we're not going to do it kind of the long way. We're going to use a hotkey. You can just hit the letter O when you've selected a crop. All right, so I'm going to click on my crop and hit the letter O. And you can just cycle quickly through all these different grids. You've got a spiral. You've got different rule of thirds and grids and these angles and all kinds of awesome things like that. So very quickly, you can go through and use these different grids. So we're going to go ahead and just commit this change. And there we go. We have cropped our first image. Now, that's not it. There's a bunch of other cool things that we can do with the crop tool. So let's hop over to another image, this guy right here. And let's take a look at some of these features. So remember before I showed you, we can scale this guy down. Let's actually just go to more of a conventional grid here. And then you drag your image around underneath the crop. Well, let's say you hate that. You just absolutely dislike that. You prefer when you can drag the crop around. Well, if you just hit the letter P, it's going to bring the crop tool back to sort of classic mode or the old way. And that is going to allow you to just drag the crop around. So if that's the way you prefer, by all means, you can go in and do that. That's located here underneath the little settings menu. Use classic mode, note the hotkey, the letter P. I'm just gonna untick that. I wanna use the new mode. And here I would just drag my image around. Now, one of the awesome things about this, I'm gonna right click, or one of the other awesome things, I feel like I keep saying one of the awesome things about this. I'm gonna right click here and just hit reset crop. One of the super cool things about this is also adapted from Lightroom is that when you rotate your crop here, at least initially, it's going to force that crop to remain within the boundaries of the image. It's not just gonna allow you to rotate out here or over here or down here or over here out into no man's land and then all of a sudden you've got these big diagonal pockets of white or black or your foreground or background color you know, sticking out from the sides of your image. See, if I grab and I start rotating, it's going to say, all right, you want to rotate this image, but I know that you want the image. You don't care about this transparent nonsense around the image. So let's just hang out and let's go ahead and crop the image like that. And then I can go ahead and commit those changes and boom, we get rid of the rest of the stuff and we save the part of the image we want and we don't get all those pockets of color around the image. 
All right. Also now in the crop tool, which was in the crop tool in both Lightroom and Camera Raw, is the ability to choose an aspect ratio, which is basically, do you want to constrain this crop tool to, to crop to a certain size or not, not even particularly a certain size, but just a, a shape that would fit within a certain size. For instance, right now, this image is at the same aspect ratio as my camera shot it. And that is not an eight by 10. So if I'm photographing a family portrait, let's say, and they say, hey, we love this picture or that picture or the other picture, but we want it as an eight by 10, I would have to take it into Camera Raw or Lightroom to crop it. Even if I was doing all the editing here in Photoshop, it was just a pain in the neck. Either that or I could take the rectangular marquee tool and go ahead and set it to a fixed size and you know set it as a width or height of eight and 10 inches. But it was a little bit of a pain in the neck. So now if I'm working here in Photoshop and I just want to crop it right down to an eight by 10, I can choose that ratio here, the four by five, and it even has in parentheses, hey, this is actually the eight by 10. I can do that and it's gonna automatically cut it down for me. And I can go ahead and just hit the check icon. And there we go. We have an image that's gonna print out perfectly as an eight by 10. We're not gonna have to worry about cropping or having the printer crop or anything crazy like that. We can do all of it right here uh, within the crop tool. And you can also punch in manually your own ratio settings. If you've got something like a three by 16 or a weird ratio that is not something that's maybe standard, you're gonna be able to punch that right in. And also you can save that preset as something if you know you're gonna use it later. So super cool. I'm gonna go back to unconstrained, I think here, and just go ahead and commit this change. It's still gonna leave it as eight by 10, which is fine. We're just gonna commit that change there. Now, let's say we've cropped this to an eight by 10, but then we realize a month later or five minutes later, oh, you know what? I actually wanna go back to what I had before. Well, as we've been working here, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's this delete cropped pixels option up here in the tool options bar. If that's not checked on, we're not deleting the cropped pixels, just as it states. They are being saved, they're just being hidden. And you can bring these back using the crop tool, or what's kind of cool is you can just hit Commander Control T or go edit Free Transform, which is Commander Control T. And you can see that Free Transform is saying, hey, I know you've got all of this image here. So we could even just transform this image and bring some of this stuff back. Now, obviously, remember that we did crop it on an angle, so we'd have a little bit of an issue. So just for that, cause it would probably be better for us to go ahead and just grab any one of these corners here once the crop tool is selected and you can see we still have all of this so we can take this in here we can rotate it back maybe a little bit bring this guy up this way and go ahead and commit that change and you can see just like that we have a totally recropped image where we're actually bringing back some of the image we had cropped so really awesome and really uh, is gonna keep you from stressing out about making crops and just kind of being creative with your cropping because cropping can be a super, super important aspect of composing your images, at least in post-production. It can make a huge change on your images. So outside of the crop tool, a, a tool that sort of spawned off of the crop tool is this guy, the perspective crop tool. Let's go ahead and take a look at him. I'm going to jump over to another image here and I'm going to just zoom out and I'm going to grab the perspective crop tool. Now, the easiest way to explain the perspective crop tool is just to use it. So just kind of follow along with me and it's a very powerful tool and it's very uh, sort of reliant upon the perspective grid you make. So what I'm going to do, bricks are a, a nice image to start with because you kind of have horizontal and vertical lines going everywhere for you to ensure that you're sticking with the perspective of the photograph you're working with. If you start to wander outside of that perspective, crazy things start to happen, which can be cool, but not necessarily what we want in this case. So I'm going to start down here and I'm going to run up along the side of this image. So I click, uh, click once, don't click and drag, just click once and then drag your line up. Click at the, I'm going to click at the top of this window here because I know that's definitely a good vertical line. I'm going to drag across these bricks to this other side of this window. All right, so straight across those bricks. And I'm gonna drag it down along this side of the window, but also I wanna watch and make sure that I'm lining myself up with one of these uh, lines of mortar running between these bricks. So something like that should work out pretty well. So just like that, we've created this perspective grid, but what good is that? What good is it gonna do for us? Well, what Photoshop's gonna do is it's gonna take this grid and it's gonna rotate it up in front of our faces as if I had taken this picture looking straight into the brick. This is awesome if you're you know, working with textures or you wanna create kind of a cool background, or sometimes you actually do wanna alter the perspective of a large chunk of your image, and it's super cool. And again, if you nail your perspective grid, Photoshop does, an awesome job. You can see just how well it takes that brick that was on an angle and flips it right up and puts it in front of my face. Now, the reason we're getting this big white corner is because there was that big chunk of my perspective grid that ran off of my document. So don't worry about that. As long as you're working within your document, you'll be good to go. And a little bit of content aware fill will take care of that in no time. 
So that's it for this one. Thank you so much for sticking around and checking out the new crop tool. It is an amazing tool here in Photoshop CS6. Make sure you go like the Tutvid page on Facebook. There'll be a link for it in the video description, as well as follow me on Twitter at Tutvid. Thanks a lot, guys.